Hey everyone, Rob here, and we got quite a lot of updates to go through with Grimsvot today. The first thing I want to do is just go over the graphs that we got here so we can see the height of the ice has tapered off and it's not dropping nearly as fast. It looks like it's leveling out and that's just because the Jokulhlaip and that glacier flooding is reaching an end. They said that yesterday was probably the peak of it and so it's all slowing down and a lot of water is not coming out anymore from the... Uh, from the, the glacier, the volcano, the active area in that in that glacial flooding. And we can see the tremor measurements have quite a lot of activity compared to the previous sort of upward trend of the blue and green. And then, of course, the purple color is really going nuts. Now, I do want to emphasize a little bit on that because if we look at some of the earthquakes that have happened in that area in the past little while uh, there's been quite a few and some of them have been um, over a magnitude of three now the icelandic meteorological office has raised the warning level for grims but from yellow to orange for all international flights and what this indicates is that there's an increasing probability of an eruption in the area and i know we've been talking about this a lot but uh, it's definitely something that they're looking into as well. Uh, we can see here there was a picture that they provided of the Yokelhaip in the river flooding from yesterday. But uh, if we take a look at some of the earthquake measurements, and you know we can see we should probably narrow down to Vatnajökull, and then we can see here uh, there's a lot of activity that's not related to Grimsvat, so you'll have to sort of go through. You can take a look at this uh, yourself if you want, but we can say over two and search that and we can see that Grimsvot is the majority of that uh, and we got some Sunday and Monday so they are saying that it is increasing and the largest quake measured 3.6 you can see it right here and that was today this morning on Monday uh, on the Richter scale and if it was followed by 10 quakes between 6 and 8 in the morning which is the reason why that they're concerned and they are saying as well that it is not they don't appear to be ice earthquakes but in the actual volcano itself so that's that's probably why they have an increased alertness for something that could possibly happen and uh, there are no eruptions or signs of an eruption yet on the meters but they have their eyes glued to Grimsvatten and there's not much that they can do <laughs> except for sit back and just wait and see what happens now the orange color, if we take a look, we just pull in this graph here. You can see that Grimsvot's the only one that's orange. Even Fagrisvot has been downgraded to this uh, measly yellow. But the orange and what that means is it says that the volcano shows increased activity and an increasing probability of an eruption. Uh, and now there are three Icelandic volcanoes. The color marks beyond normal and the green ones are normal. And that's Grimsvot in orange, Fagrisvot and uh, Askia are both in yellow and yellow for those of you that are wondering it says that it shows a sign of activity beyond normal conditions or they do yellow after it's been reduced from orange from a higher level uh, and they're saying that although the activity has decreased significantly but they're still closely monitoring it because it may increase again and that's what these well specifically factors felt that's what the yellow means is it went from the orange down to the yellow and then eventually it will go down to green now the top level of all of these colors is of course red and it indicates an eruption is imminent uh, or <laughs> the ash is likely to reach the atmosphere or even an eruption is just taking place and the significant ash is released into the atmosphere so orange is basically the last step before the eruption goes off uh, and so a lot of people are looking at it we can see here that the Icelandic Meteorological Office, they are posting a ton of updates over time. Uh, if even just looking at today, they posted at 9.20, 10.30, uh, 4, 4.30 in the afternoon. And you can go on their website. I'll post a link. Uh, but you can go on their website and you can get information in terms of the, the flow rate of the water, uh, which in this case today was 1,100. And they said that it has decreased significantly. But you can keep up to date on here and see how everything is progressing. One thing that I think is really hilarious is, uh, let me translate this, is 
the terminology that, that was used here was that uh, the volcano has become what they would like to say is pregnant. And what they're saying is that the ice cave has sunk. I mean, we saw that it was over 70 meters that the ice has fallen. And, you know, Yokel Hype is, is kind of hit its peak yesterday. All these, these eruptions, or sorry, the earthquakes are going off. And uh, a geologist was saying that the sequence of events is something that they've seen before. And he said it's always kind of funny with Grimsvat where you have this Yoko Hlaip, the, the volcano has swelled significantly and accumulated all this magma and possibly it could lead to eruption. He's saying that that is what happened back in 2004, but it's not always like that. So, but even so, you know, these eruptions have caused a run with increased melting and they're just kind of waiting to see what happens. And, um, Everyone's just kind of saying, yeah, the eruption is definitely in the cards because it's been 10 years since it last erupted, which was back in 2011. Uh, it was a very powerful eruption then, short but powerful, you know, stopped flights and so forth. Um, and so they're saying that the magma accumulation, there's a very good chance that an eruption will occur either shortly after the Yoko Plate and the glacial flooded, flooding has ended, which it has yesterday, more or less, uh, hit its peak or a few days later, and it could be up to six months after. So they're kind of saying that, uh, yeah, they don't really know. It's either it's like, oh, maybe it could happen today, tomorrow, the next day, like within a week, uh, or within a couple months. So, yeah, that's a, it's a bunch of news. I mean, you know, as I said, the biggest thing is, of course, the color coding of the volcano going into orange. That is the, the highest level, and... Uh, we're going to have to just wait and see what happens. I know uh, it's been 50-50. We've been talking about it for quite a while now. And uh, yeah, interesting next few days, I think, especially as the earthquakes are increasing and they're saying it is not due to the ice, but within the volcano itself. So I guess we'll find out. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to you know, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, because I will keep you up to date. I do have a couple of live feeds going on right now. Of course, we have this one here, which shows the height changes and the tremor measurements if you want to keep up to date with that. And these update pretty frequently. And then, of course, brand new, I have this very <laughs> exciting and boring, currently, because it's nighttime here, um, sort of webcam that the meteorological office has. And it's two different images and they update, so it's not a live feed, but they update these images every 10 minutes and there's a delay on that. So what we're seeing now is the image that was updated at 7 p.m. And at seven, well, in 10 minutes from now, roughly, we will see the images that are updated at 7.10. Now, of course, at night, this is uh, pretty boring. It's just darkness. And uh, during the day when it's Windy, it just looks like a bunch of snow everywhere, but this will become very important. Should something happen, you will definitely see it on these images. So something to keep in mind. If you hear something, you can check it out right here. So thanks so much for watching, and until next time, uh, that's it. Thanks. <laughs>